Generics encourage code reusage. They allow you to write one implementation and use it with different types. They are often used when you want to connect the type of your input parameter with the type of the output of your function. And in this video I will show you how to write a generic function and how to take advantage of it. Generics are commonly used with functions. That's why for this example I prepared also a function. I call it getRandom and the idea is that we pass an array to it with a lot of strings and then from all the elements in this array, array.length, we will select a random one. This can be easily done by doing what I call here a dice roll. So we will use the mass random function to select a random index from that array. Then we use that index, the randomly selected one, to access the specific element of that array. I've also prepared a list of names. You can see they are sorted alphabetically and uh, we will pick one just by chance. So I will pass the names array into my getRandom function. Then the mass random call will be picked up and give me like a randomly chosen name that I can then lock to my console. Let's give it a try to see which name will be selected. And there we go, Noah is the first one. Let's run it one more time to prove that it is random. And there we go, William is now here the one that got printed to the console. Now that we have a common understanding of the getRandom function, let's try to put some numbers into it. I prepared here a list of random numbers and when I want to put them into my getRandom function, I will see an error here from TypeScript telling me that, hey, you can't give me numbers because the getRandom function declares the array to be of type string array. So we have to change it to number, but then the other side of my code won't be happy because the names cannot be entered anymore. And this is where most people put then any. I will also just do it here right now. And when we enter any, then we probably also get out any. And this is now where we will be sent to hell because if we check the random name, we will see that it is now of type any. And if we check the random number, we will also get an any. Let's take a step back and change it to string again. And then we will also not be very lucky because TypeScript now infers, okay, random name must be of type string. Let's add a uh, type of lock statement here so that we can really see if the type of uh, random name is string. And for random number, we will also lock the type. So type of random number because TypeScript assumes that both are strings. Yeah, and here in the IDE. But if we execute the program, we'll see that now Olivia selected is a string but the 727 is a number. So we get back a string and a number, but TypeScript thinks, oh, it must uh, both be of type string as the output type is string. And this is now very, very dangerous. And we can fight this with generics, which I will show you now. All right, let's get down to generics. And generics are very easy to implement. We just need to use or define a type variable. How to do that? Well, to insert a type variable, we need the angle brackets. So after the function name, we put an opening and a closing angle bracket. By the way, because of their nature and their look, they are also called the diamond operator. And in that diamond operator, we then put in a T. It doesn't have to be named T, but let's just use it here like this. And then we can use it for the input type and the output type. As said, we will often see the T, but you can name your type variable anything you like. Now we see that getRandom also has a diamond operator here in the type inference because TypeScript knows that we are entering strings. So it assumes that our T is also of type string. So that's um, type inference here again. For our number example, it looks different. If we hover over getRandom, we will see that TypeScript now knows that we are entering numbers and infers the T to be of type number. This behavior of TypeScript finding out about the type is called type argument inference, but we can also define the type ourselves. So just use the angle brackets and write the type that you want to use, in that case here, number. And for the string example, we want to guarantee that uh, string will be the value for the type variable. So let's run the program, because if we run it, we will see something fantastic. We will still see that uh, we get uh, strings and numbers. So Evelyn is a string and 321 is a number. And we see now that random name is inferred to string and random number to number. Now you've seen the big power of generics. We can use one function, but with many different types without losing the type information. And this is very, very important. B 
because TypeScript without a type is just a script and we want to use TypeScript. In the beginning, I've shown you that uh, when you don't define the type or if you define it to be of type any, then you lose the information and you don't know anymore if you get back strings or numbers yeah, because it can be any. Now with the type variable, we can use the get random function and we can tell it, hey, please use strings. Yeah, so with the type variable that we used here, we defined then, hey, give in or use it with strings so that the input parameter is of type string and also the output is of type string. Same we did for the numbers. For the numbers, we also said then, okay, get random with number, which means that then the get random function will use number for the T, for the template. Yeah, let's say T is a, is a placeholder. So the placeholder T will be replaced with a number and then our array must be of type number array and our return value will be then also of type number. And this is very great and powerful and also like the best case to use generics. So always use generics when you want to connect two types. In this case, we want to connect the input type with the output type. And we've probably done this here, which makes a great showcase of when and how to use generics. In my next video, I will show you some advanced techniques. I will show you how you can use multiple generics in one function. And I will also show you how you can use generics with classes and interfaces. So stay tuned.